All right, welcome back to part two of Smart Guys for October 30th. Again, it's a Saturday, so it's a little bit different. We're actually going to talk about last night's SmackDown. It's the Halloween episode. Yeah, the special Halloween edition. Happy Halloween. Um, so basically on SmackDown, uh, following the pay-per-view, uh, the main, the, the big thing was Undertaker lost the Buried Alive match for what was going to happen. Really weird, strange promo that it runs when SmackDown starts. It shows Undertaker walking through all the hallway. Let me tell you about the new entrance to SmackDown. The new opening. There was a new opening? With the song and all. That's because it's Green Day. That's been like a month now they had that opening. We never talked about it. Oh, how the, the, they have a Green Day song now is their song. And it's really weird because it's like, it's out of place. It doesn't yeah, get... Yeah, it, it, What I've been thinking, every time that I watch SmackDown, I think, I remember when SmackDown had, had uh, the Marilyn Manson song, Beautiful People. Mm -hmm. That song fit the show perfectly. And ever since then, every song they picked has been weirder and weirder and weirder. Every year when they have their season, you know, launch, the new season of SmackDown. And this year now they have a Green Day song. And don't get me wrong, I like Green Day and I like the song, but it just doesn't seem to fit the show. You should have, like, Longview or those songs at the opening. I don't know. But anyway, so they have this really weird Undertaker promo. He's walking down a hallway and he opens a door that seems to be, like, beaming light. And he walks through the door and that's the end of the promo. You have no idea what it meant. He went to hell. It almost, it almost, seems, like, it almost seems like it's alluding that he died and went to heaven or something. He's dead, yeah. So, really weird. Um, he's in heaven now. He's going to come back with some angels. He's going to fight. So, the show really opens with Kane and Paul Bearer coming out to the ring. And Kane basically saying... All right, I beat the Undertaker. Let's have a moment of silence for him, because even though I guess even though he hates him, he, it was kind of weird. It's almost like he did respect him, even though he hated him. So he wanted to have a moment of silence for his brother. He basically says the Undertaker's never coming back. He's gone from WWE, and uh, then Real. all of a sudden, Alberto of all the people, Alberto Del Rio pulls out in this freaking Excalibur old ass car, which is hilarious. So like. What? It was like the biggest contrast of what could possibly happen. It was like a moment of silence at one thing, and then Alberto Del Rio pulling out in this old classic car. Yeah. So he comes to the ring, and of course, you know, Kane is irate. He's like, who the hell do you think you are? What are you doing coming to the ring during the moment of silence? He, Del Rio attacks Kane. <laughs> it's like, huh? And then all of a sudden, Rey Mysterio comes out. He attacks Del Rio. He actually does a 619 to Paul Bearer. Edge comes out to add to this clusterfuck. Ends up spearing Kane. It's just like, what is going on? But you can tell where they're leading. Uh, what ends up happening is that a triple threat match gets set up later in the night between Edge, Mysterio, and Del Rio. And the winner's going to get the number one contender shot. Okay. Uh, so it makes sense. It's just really a really clusterfuck way to open <laughs> the show. Um, That's how you get you know into a, a match. You just come in. You, you just know, come in come out and, and show up and fucking attack people. Like, all right, you're gonna shut in, in a classic car. You need to have a classic yeah. car. Okay. Apparently, if you didn't have that, you wouldn't have gotten in there. So now for the third show in a row, we had a pay per view and Raw. Now for SmackDown, the same match. We have another rematch: Dolph Ziggler against Daniel Bryan. It's a good match. <laughs> match number three. Once again, another good match. Every time they have this match, it's good. Mm -hmm. I almost feel. Guilty, like maybe WWE knows that this is the best match they can put on right now, so maybe that's why for three shows in a row they've been giving. So it's it a good way to make guys, both guys look good and get them on the show. Um, uh, so it goes back and forth. It's pretty much a, a really good match, um, and then basically, it's a really weird ending because there's a ref bump. So the ref's kind of like half out of it, and Ziggler legitimately hits the zigzag and is pinning Daniel Bryan. You, he would have won the match. But the ref is like out in the corner, so Vicky gets in the ring because she thinks she's the SmackDown consultant. She goes, one, two, three, Ziggler wins. And then the ref wakes up and says, no, I didn't see it, this is bull. So then they get into this big verbal argument. In the meantime, Daniel Bryan super kicks Dolph Ziggler in the face and wins the match. So it's really weird. And, and the thing that, that I don't get is where they're going with this angle because now you've had two matches in a row where basically Dolph Ziggler didn't technically lose the match. In one match, his foot was under the rope. In the next match, he actually had a three count, yet they keep giving the wins to Daniel Bryan. And I don't know if that's because they don't think Bryan's strong enough right now to, to legitimately win a match against Dolph Ziggler, or maybe this is just some really weird angle they're trying to go with with Ziggler that this keeps happening. Is it a way to keep Ziggler looking decent, maybe? Maybe it looks some, protects him in a way? I don't know. Really? Well, it makes Daniel Bryan look like he, can't, like he has to get lucky to win. Right. Um, I hope I hope they go when they see a punk, uh, you know, Daniel Bryan 
direction. If, if they do, and that, that's why I, I also thought this was weird, because on Monday, they were setting up this angle that CM Punk was scouting, mm -hmm. uh, and he had watched Daniel Bryan, and when Daniel Bryan won that match, he actually had applauded. Now, here it is, the same match on SmackDown, CM Punk's not there, so it's like, are they going to drop that angle, or is it only going to be on Raw? Well, he loves SmackDown. Bryan, he, he did, he he did hates SmackDown, he hates but, SmackDown now. but it, I mean, it seems like everyone's crossing over whenever right, they want, anyway, yeah, so, yeah. really, I don't know. Um, yeah, those guys had good matches in the other places, so it would be excellent if they let them have a match. There were a lot of weird, weird backstage promos on this uh, this SmackDown. Kelly Kelly had a promo with Cody Rhodes where they were trying to to both use the mirror at the same time, and Cody was trying to hog the mirror. Then Big Show came and said, "Listen, you know, stop being an asshole, basically." And Cody was like, "Oh, well, you know, uh, I would I would wrestle against you tonight to settle this, but I'm a tag team wrestler now, and I'm I team with Drew McIntyre. We just lost the titles, but that's okay. We're still a tag team." Yeah. And so Big Show says, all right, I'll find a partner, and we'll go out and we'll challenge you. So that's like a preview of later tonight what a match uh, would, be, would be coming up. Um, up next, another match. I hate saying Another match with Caval, where he comes out. He wrestles Jack Swagger this time. Jack Swagger comes out with his eagle mascot. Mm -hmm. That's actually uh, Chavo. That's yeah. Chavo? Yeah. Is that going to be like an angle later on? Oh, my know. God. I don't really care either. So he comes out with <laughs> his eagle mascot, and Caval, again, a really good match. Every time you see Caval in the ring, I, I mean, I followed this guy back when he was in TNA, when he was called Low Key. Mm -hmm. He's a solid wrestler and really impressive some of the stuff he can do because he is a smaller guy. They won't let him win a match in WWE. Since he came to SmackDown, he has not won a match. He's a joke character. I just don't understand what the, why they're doing this. He's like the Santino of, of uh, SmackDown. It's just like a joke. I don't know. It, it basically, he taps to the ankle lock. You know, Swagger gets angry because the match is going on too long. He smashes his leg against the ring post. He puts him in the ankle lock and wins the match. So the ankle lock is so bad. Well, it's because it's not a real ankle lock anymore. It's so stupid. You know, when, when Kurt Angle was first doing it. Well, at first, first Shamrock did it, and then right. Angle did it. And now uh, this dude's dead. Kurt Angle's done it for so long now, it's like, just, uh, just let him have it. Yeah. It's something else, man. Uh, so this was a special Halloween episode of SmackDown, which we forgot to mention. Um, so they had a Divas Halloween contest. I did not write down who everyone dressed as because I didn't give a shit, and the match was pretty sloppy. Um... And basically, it was really weird because it was it started out slow, then it actually started getting a little good, and then they cut the commercial. When they come back, Kelly Kelly pins uh, Rose. It's over. It's like the match actually <laughs> happened during the commercial on a show that they record. It wasn't live, so why? Maybe the match was so bad they didn't want anyone to see it, and they just put it in a commercial. <laughs> right? I don't know. Editing. So up next, there was a uh, the match with McIntyre and Rhodes against the Big Show and his mystery opponent. And it was really weird because Rhodes and McIntyre came out and started talking about Nexus and saying, Nexus, you, you won our titles, but it's bullshit. We're getting them back. And from now on, we're called the Dashing Ones. I'm like, okay. That's that's kind of a crappy name. How like, come uh, Tyler Rex wasn't on the show? Wasn't he in the new star? Same, same thing with, with Zeke. You know, or these Zeke? guys were on the pay-per-view for bragging rights, and now they're off the show It's kind of weird what, you know... They're supposed to be top guys now. They're yeah, the right. Top guys. We'll never see Tyler X again. He'll be he'll be mopping the floors next week. Um, so then, Big Show comes out. And pretty funny. A fan had like this this wig, this this uh, yellow afro wig because it was Halloween. They were dressed mm -hmm. up, and Big Show takes it from the fan and puts it on and walks in the ring. He's like, "Yeah, it's like, what the hell is this?" And uh, and then he ends up that Kofi Kingston is his partner, and they actually announced that Kofi Kingston is going to be on Ghost Hunters. Uh, tomorrow night uh, for Halloween on Sci-Fi, which is pretty cool. They do this every year on Sci-Fi. They have like a live six-hour show where the Ghost Hunters go to some haunted house, and they've been taking wrestlers. Uh, two years ago, they had CM Punk on there, and now this year they have Kofi. So okay, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, it's a good match. Uh, it's really weird because uh, we mentioned this, I think, last week. But Cody Rhodes is against using move of Gold Dust. And this, and this, he keeps, he, 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 the move where he, he, no, not where he pulls himself <laughs> up. The move where Goldust drops to the mat on his back and slaps up his mm -hmm. opponent. Cody Rhodes uses this in every match now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, is he taking moves or are they training together? Like, there's something weird going on. Should talk about the, uh, the stand-up for WWE stuff this week. I'm skipping all <laughs> this. We don't even, at this point, politics at I've this worked point. for 15 years <clears throat> in this company. And they're the, the commands are the best ever. Uh, yeah, I mean, we talked about this last week. The WWE is under attack right now because Linda McMahon's running for Senate in Connecticut, and so everyone's saying, "How could she be a good senator when her company has wrestlers that die? I actually, uh, I'm my, they're irresponsible and all this." I'm my, so. my drive in to your house today. I heard Linda McMahon on the radio, like, yeah, like, advertisement. Oh yeah. And she, her position now, like what she's promoting, is that she's not a career politician. She goes, "I'm, I'm only going to serve two terms." 
because I'm I'm not a career politician. Huh. But two terms is like twelve years. Right. And she's like she's like sixty two right now. <laughs> so it's like really, Linda, you don't want to run for a third term when you're really like, when you're, you're dead. When you're in your late seventies, <laughs> you know, oh, you, you know, you're yeah, you are a career politician, I guess, you know. So so anyway, that's just an aside. They are running these promos. Oh, by the way, at, at the uh, show. at the the polls. On Tuesday, mm -hmm. they said they first said that you weren't allowed to wear WWE merchandise. That's right, and then they so, overturned it this right. week. So now what they're doing is at certain polling places, the WWE will be there handing out free merchandise. Nice. <laughs> I'm going. So you should, you should definitely, you should definitely go. Nice. Yeah. We should go and wear like the most offensive wrestling gear ever. Yeah. Like you know, I wouldn't vote for Linda, but yeah. <laughs> Val, dressed like I'll Val Venus. I'll take so I'll take a a purple John Cena you know, <laughs> shirt or whatever it is. Okay, so anyway, getting back to the match, Big Show and Kofi Kingston against McIntyre and Rowe, oh, excuse me, the Dashing Ones, which is their new name. Uh, pretty decent match. Um, the way that it basically ends is that Big Show chokeslams Rhodes uh, for the three count, but it was really weird because what happened was, I guess Drew McIntyre was attacking Big Show, and then all of a sudden, he wasn't the legal man, so Big Show kind of pushed him away, which kind of like scared him almost that the guy was so powerful. He goes to choke slam Rhodes and Drew stands there and watches him get pinned and doesn't break up the count. And for heels, it's like why would you not bring up the count? Heels always break up the count. <laughs> so then after the match, there's actually a, a, a back scenes uh, behind the scenes uh, backstage. That's what I was looking for. Backstage clip where it's Rhodes and McIntyre arguing, and Rhodes is like, I don't understand why you didn't help me. And he's like, Well, I'm a, you know, he's a giant. What do you want me to do? They end up arguing and then they break up. So they just formed this tag team called the Dashing Ones, and now they're broken up permanently for good. So a one night only event. Um, and then it was the main event, Triple Threat. Uh, and this was, a, and I want to say, probably one of the best matches I've seen this year. Mm -hmm. I have to say. Because this match, it was a long match. They gave it enough time. It was, this could have been on the pay per view. Yeah. Every, super, every one of the guys, Del Rio, Mysterio, Edge, were hitting their finishers. They were all kicking out of their favor. They were doing reversals, pinning combinations. Extremely good match. And then finally, at the edge of the end of the match, Edge ends up winning. So Edge will be the number one contender to face Kane at the next WWE pay per view. That's kind of weird, right? Eh, I mean, I think they want to continue the angle with Ray and Del Rio at this point because it really kind of ended abruptly mm -hmm. because of bragging rights. I guess there's no one else really to put in that position because Kane's going to maintain the belt on Undertaker's mm -hmm. back. I think I, I think, think so. I think that's why they moved Edge over to SmackDown to begin with because they didn't know who they wanted to push to wrestle Kane. So that's I don't know why they, would, they, throw they shuffled him back over there in order. They could have done something a little different, like Kofi Kingston gets a shot or something like that. You know, someone that uh, one of the big baby faces that I guess. To, I mean, I don't know, whatever. But so that's that, why Edge and Edge and him is probably more something they could sell better. Right. So that's it for WWE this week. Now on to TNA Impact. Um, TNA Nitro. <laughs> <laughs> As John likes to call that's it. it yeah. Well, that's what it was this week. Definitely. Because basically, this show, the more that you watch it, it's mimicking exactly what the WCW used to do. And it's like, what are they doing? They're going right down the same path. The TNA is so inconsistent. They'll have amazing shows and then they'll have horrible shows. Right. And this is one of those horrible shows that, that mirrors Nitro. Well, the whole, first, the whole first 15 minutes of the show is six of the, the knockouts fighting in the back and yeah. spilling into... The actual ring and it that was, like that I felt was better than the typical like I'm Eric Bischoff I'm coming out right now. Sure, yeah. Um, I mean at least it, it was a different way to open the show. It went on a little long. I think it was like okay. way too long. I, I thought maybe it could have been for three minutes and then they could have stopped it rather than yeah, after, fifteen. After a couple of minutes, you got the idea and it didn't really build anything. They were just kind of punching and throwing. Right, through. and it wasn't like anyone was getting hurt or nothing. It I'll was take just, that over. Yeah. Just you know Eric Bischoff coming out in the beginning though. So um, it was basically. On one side, you had Mickey James and the Beautiful People. The other side was Tara, Madison Rain, who's the current Knockouts champion, and Sarita. Um, so they're fighting, all all going crazy in the ring. No one can break them up. So Ric Flair comes out with the two security guards, and Flair's trying to break them up. And all of a sudden, he gets slapped by Tara, and then so slapped, slap him. slapped by Mickey, and he's getting, oh, my God. And he starts freaking out, and he's like, who do you think you are, my ex-wives? Yeah, you know, I'm going to... Uh, it's, I thought it was weird because I don't know if how many people know this, but Flair's gotten arrested for beating his ex wives <laughs> So for him to say something like that, I was like, oh. It was almost like an inside joke at, at Flair that, that he's had like six wives, so once right. you go in there and like, you know, interact with these six women who are slapping you. Very weird. It was kind of, why is he the one that comes out? So it was kind of strange. So and then, like, they, he makes a match for later? Well, that's that's what I was just going to say. Why Flair, do they just have the match there? Flair says, oh, we're going to have a match later. And it's like, you're right. If they're all there, why don't they have it then? But, get over then. I don't know. They ended up, he, he announced that there was going to be a six 
women tag match later in the night, and then all of a sudden they ran a promo that the main event was going to be Anderson versus Double J in a chain match for the main event. But Anderson, if you if you didn't watch last week's Impact, near the end of Impact, uh, Jeff Hardy had hit Anderson with a steel chair, and they didn't really show it on air, but Anderson actually got a concussion, real concussion. His head got gashed open, and this guy, I mean, you can see his freaking skull. They kept showing yeah. this constantly during Impact this week. So well, there's, uh, there's no reason that something like that should go on in this day and age. Uh, after we know all the problems that wrestlers have, right? Uh, there's, there was no reason for him to get a direct chair shot right to the head like that that, that eventually caused a concussion. Right. And then to make it worse, they had an entire show that was based around this real-life right. thing that happened. This, this concussion was the running theme of this week's Impact, is that Anderson has a concussion, and people keep going to Bischoff and telling him, you can't have this match tonight against Double J, because he has a concussion. First it was the trainer, the head trainer came and said, I don't condone the match, and Bischoff said... Tough was, oh, whatever, it's what wrestlers do. We, they go in there and they fight with concussions. And then Matt Morgan, out of nowhere. Now, who's Matt Morgan in this plot line? He never had anything to do with this before. And he's supposed to be part of Fortune, so he shouldn't it's care. Weird, man. But he all of a sudden start, is really concerned, says that he had multiple concussions in the past. So he first he tries to talk to Flair. He came out of nowhere. Off. Then he talks to Bischoff, and Bischoff blows him off. He says, get the hell out of my yeah. office. I don't want to hear about this bullshit. It came completely out of nowhere because... Last week on, on reaction, I'm watching. And he's going, "Oh, this this brilliant plan that we had," and you know, so he was so, he was like such a, a member of this faction. Yeah, it makes no sense. And also his character, like his character, he was trying to like kill Hernandez <laughs> for you know for like three months. All right. So all of a sudden, and now he's just concerned about getting someone well, a concussion or wrestling with. The right. Concussion. So the entire show became like a, a public service announcement about concussions. About concussions. Um, but we'll get more about that when we get to the main event. But anyway. Um, so there was this really this angle where Pope was coming to the ring with a casket because he wanted to basically said he was challenging Abyss and he says Abyss I want to take you out and all that. Have we seen enough you know enough caskets in wrestling? I don't think so. I think actually there should be one casket match per show every day every time. What did uh, what did, did you hear what Taz said when they first showed him wheeling it? Yes, he says I hope that's not a. Uh, he was like I hope you don't see a, a badass fighting a, a, a UFC a UFC guy, guy next. Yeah, something like that. Something so. weird, you know. That was an allusion to. What had happened at UFC? With there was like two, there was like two or three references to WWE. In yeah, the show. there was, which was weird. So it was like it was like a Nitro. It was what Nitro used to do that stuff like little stupid inside uh, comments. Like so that. so Abyss comes out, says, "I'm gonna get rid of you, Pope. But, you know, if y'all dare you challenge me." Really weird. He grabs two fans and runs to the back. <laughs> so it's like he's kidnapping these fans on the show, which is really weird. Um, and later on in the show is when they came back to it, but just we might as well get it over with now. And the Pope had to like think about it before he had to like write up the thing. Right, Pope, Pope like, chases Abyss to the back. At first he like stood there for a while, like thinking about what to do. Right. He's like, oh, okay, we gotta run after him. <laughs> so he runs after him. Later on in the show, they cut back, and uh, Pope is hearing the screams of these fans, help me. He rushes in to help, and Abyss ambushes him, beats the crap out of him. What was he doing to that chick to make her scream like that? I don't know. What was going on there? He's showing him his face. He took his mask off. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, ugh. They were showing something else. I don't know uh, what was going on. I don't know what was going on. So he beats down Pope, puts him in the casket, and then they cut away. So it's pretty obvious that Pope is getting out of the casket during this time. Then they, he finds Janice, which Where's is his Janice? two by four with all these uh, nails in it. And then he beats the casket, which damages the casket. But you know that obviously Pope's not in there, so it was well, really silly. You know, it's, it was silly, and it, why doesn't he open the casket and hit him with the thing instead of, you know... Hitting the top of the casket, a metal casket with a fucking <laughs> with a two by four. Wood. So really weird. Even now, if he wasn't, I don't think he would have gotten hurt. Now you want to ask, is is Pope going to be out or whatever? Will this be an angle? Who knows? Um, so let's see. Samoa so Joe's dead. Still, so he's not. He still wasn't there. Right. The, no actually, on the only update. That's the next thing I was going to talk about. The only update about. on that is that apparently Double J wants to wrestle him at Turning Point. He wants right. to have a match with Joe at Turning Point. But Joe is just not even on the show this week. Um, Robbie E versus Jay Lethal. So Robbie E, if you missed it, is this guy from, he's the Jersey Shore knockoff. They call it the Shore. Mm -hmm. And uh, back and forth match. Uh, Robbie's okay, I want to say. He's not super impressive, but he's, he's not, I want to say he's not bad. He wasn't like green. You could tell no, him he's, he's been he's around some. He's, uh, his name's Rob Echoes, and he's been around uh different places. Okay. But the gimmick is just so mm -hmm. dumb that you, you don't want to really get behind the gimmick. Yeah, it's a really dumb gimmick, and he had, the, the, the match, the stipulation of the match was if he wins, he gets a title shot for the X Division title against Jay Lethal. Yeah, he was god-awful. And, yeah, exactly. What happened was his his manager, Cookie, had hairspray and sprayed... She didn't even get anywhere near his face. No, she that. sprayed Jay Lethal supposedly <laughs> in his face, even though he didn't look like he ever touched him. He can't see, and then Robbie gets he, the RKO, even though I don't know what they call it for him. 
I uh, don't get attention enough. Yeah, I, I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know what they call it, but he gets but his finisher and, and wins stupid. the match. So it sets up a title match for the next pay-per-view for the X Division title. I hope he doesn't win, please. They still have this really weird angle going on where Angelina Love is seeing Katie Lee, who used to be in WWE, and apparently they released her. Now she's in TNA, but they haven't even announced that she's there yet. She's showing up as like this delusional character in Angelina Love's This is one of those head. moments where he's a wrestling fan that <laughs> you... Are embarrassed to be one. Yeah, I was actually watching this part, and like one of my family members came in. Oh yeah, and saw me watch, like sat there for a second, and just like, what the fuck are you watching? <laughs> I felt like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of those. It's one of those moments where that's, that's actually their new their new uh, catchphrase. TNA makes you feel like an asshole. I felt like a fucking ass for watching this, and it, and it was an embarrassment. <laughs> So yeah, I'll, another really weird thing. We don't know what's going on with Katie Lee, if, she, if they're going to call her that, what she's going to be when she debuts in TNA. But she works for TNA, apparently. Um, up next, it was EV2. Uh, basically came out to the ring and said, listen, are, we've been trying to contact RVD for a whole week, and he's not answering our calls, emails, or our tweets on Twitter. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are tweets on Twitter? Really? So then RVD comes out, and it was really funny because I guess Spanky... Is part of EV2. <laughs> they call him Spanky you now. Yeah, they call him Spanky. And he was sitting in the corner reading Mick Foley's biography. I don't know if you saw that because they didn't really show it on camera. I actually did watch the entire show. I missed that. I think I was probably in another room. It was hilarious. It was, it was hilarious. He was sitting in the corner. And they didn't, they didn't focus on him. I just thought it was hilarious. It was that angle from you know a week ago yeah. where he went to Foley's book sign. He's sitting there reading the book. Like, in, the in the ring? In the ring. He's sitting in the corner that. reading the book. So anyway, uh, so RVD comes out and... Um, Basically, I you know he doesn't trust anyone. He doesn't trust any, you know he. Yeah, he doesn't care about uh, Jeff Hardy anymore, or like anything, or you know anything like that. He forgot about the title. He forgot about Jeff Hardy. He's just, just concerned about one that of the there's members. a traitor in EV2 that's yeah. talking to Eric. So then uh, he actually gets back and forth with Raven and actually accuses Raven of being this traitor. Uh, and then Fortune comes out and basically challenges uh, RVD and Raven to a tag match, and it was supposed to be. Uh, Kazarian and uh, Doug Williams. No, it was EJ and Kazarian. I'm sorry. And I, then I Doug that Williams up. starts yes. saying, getting complaining or whatever. That he right. wants a match. He hasn't been in a match for a while. So then all of a sudden they take Kazarian out of the match and put Doug Williams in the match, mm -hmm. which is a really weird angle. Like, it, it, what, what I think they're trying to lead up to is that there's dissension in Fortune, even though Fortune's a relatively new group and they uh, just built them up as God. being strong. They're, they're showing there's dissension in EV2 and there's dissension in in fortune, so you don't know who's swerving where, and this is crazy, so I better, I better turn in next week to find out, because this is really interesting stuff, I want to know who's swerving and what. Really weird. Um, so anyway, that sets up the tag match for later in the night, um, then the women's match takes place, and the match is still out of control, the women refuse to get in their corners, finally they get some order to the match, and it's okay, it's an okay match, I have to say the knockouts are probably a lot better than the divas of WWE, they, so, uh, they so actually have wrestling training, and they know what they're doing Mickey for the James, most part. James, Tara, and Sarita are pretty good. Uh, actually, the other ones are okay. Yeah, the end was really good when Sarita actually does a tiger bomb on Velvet Sky. Like, what the fuck? And mm -hmm. she actually did a, a really good, you know, professional move to well, finish the match. It's probably the, better, it's probably the <clears> best thing <throat> on the show. Was that <laughs> for wrestling? It's kind of scary. Wrestling wise, pretty much. It's pretty scary considering that's a you know a women's mm -hmm. match. Right? Uh, up next was a triple threat match for the tag team titles, which is weird because they were already running promos that Team 3D was going to wrestle the Motor City Machine Guns at the next pay-per-view because they were retiring and they wanted to go all on top. Mm. But then they have a triple match, a threat match for the titles. It was Generation Me against Ink Ink against the Motor City Machine Guns. A uh, really long match. It's a usual tag match for TNA where there's a lot of spots, there's a lot of crazy stuff, and everyone loves the oh, match. Oh, that was probably the best match. I'm sorry. That was definitely the That's best match. That's probably the best thing on the show. Um, after the, well, the Motor City Machine Guns are tang. At least it was and, an actual match with a finish and, a, and things that went on. And no screw jobs or anything or abrupt endings. Uh, Team 3D hits the ring. They challenge the Motor City Machine Guns officially in person and finally we get an answer. Yes, the Machine Guns accept and they're going to have this match going at the next pay-per-view. Yeah. So we finally have an answer that that's definitely yeah, happening. The word going around is mm -hmm. that Team 3D has like a two-year contract. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if this is going to, you know, maybe they'll get screwed by like uh, one of the other teams will like screw them, and then they'll and then be, like, it sets up like a program. Maybe perhaps I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. So that's, that's probably one of the better things on TNA right now. So, so then they run the Turning Point card, which is the Turning Point is the next pay per view. Uh, it's going to be Mickey James versus Tara, just a match. It's not even a title match, just a match. Um, team 3D against the Motor City Machine Guns for the tag titles, a retirement match for Team 3D. Anderson versus Jeff Hardy for the title, but there's a giant question mark behind that because. Anderson supposedly has this concussion, and we don't know if he's going to be able to come back. Plus, he has this crazy chain match tonight with Double J. No one knows what condition he's going to be in after that. Um, so then we have the tag match, AJ and Doug Williams against RVD and Raven. 
uh, goes back and forth a little bit. Basically what ends up happening is uh, Raven, first of all, gets double teamed by AJ and, and Doug Williams, and RVD just walks extremely slowly to the ring and lets him get his ass beat. Mm. Because apparently the plot is that RVD thinks that he's the traitor of the group, so he doesn't give a shit. But then they do eventually start wrestling for real, uh, but once that ends up happening is uh, Raven gets knocked out of the ring, and then Ric Flair comes out and hits Raven with the belt, which basically knocks out Raven. Now RVD goes for the hot tag, and Raven's not there, and RVD says, what the hell, what are you doing over there? And RVD gets pinned, and so... It's so stupid. It's like, how did, how did they know that you know, Raven would be on the outside and like, take advantage of that? Right. It made no, it made just no, like last week, how did they know that Sabu was going to throw the chair and hit him? And, right. Makes uh, no sense. Dumb. The other weird thing that happened is that to win the match, it was actually Doug Williams jumped off the turnbuckle and hit RVD with, his, with a move, and he goes for the pin, but while he was jumping off the turnbuckle, AJ slapped his ass which constituted a tag, so AJ then got the pin, and now Doug's like, what the fuck, I just, I won the match, and you get the pin, that's bullshit. Mm. So this is more dissension within Fortune, supposedly, that's what it's supposed to allude to. Uh. So now we have the main event, which is hilarious. Oh, yeah. So you're supposed to have Double J versus Anderson in this chain match, and they play, they play Anderson's music, Matt Morgan comes out, and they're like, what is Matt Morgan? And Morgan says, listen, Anderson's not coming out, I'll take his place. We'll have this match. So he he has a chain on him for some reason. They go out. They start their because oh, the the match was going to be like each guy pulls the chain and they right and they right. fight with the chains. Okay, so it's a chain match. They beat the shit out of each other, but basically Double J wins. Uh, but then Matt Morgan attacks him after the match is over. So that then prompts Fortune to come out. All the Fortune comes out, beats the crap out of Matt, so basically turning on Matt Morgan, kicking him out of Fortune, and then they proceed to lynch him with the chain. <laughs> And I thought that the days of lynching people on TV and professional wrestling were over, but I guess uh, that we were kind of going I kind back of a, I kind of appreciated that, that thing. Oh, you appreciated the uh, lynching? I don't say I appreciate lynching, <laughs> but it was, it was a, it, you know, it, it was a strong, it was a strong visual that, like, this guy's out of the group. Oh, my God. I just, yeah. I just don't get it. It was and too far, what you saying? It was stupid. It was stupid. like, throw, beat him down, throw him out of the group. Why do you have to fucking lynch the guy with a chain? Like, you're right. You're they're, going they're, from. They're, they they still think they're in the attitude era, they really do. Uh, and well, they, you know they they try they, they go a little further, but uh, you know what I mean. Like they think that they're still in competition with WWE like they were back then when it was really head to head WCW against WWE. So it's like a shock thing. I could say back if they did that in the nineties, I would completely understand why they did it. Why they're doing it now is just all right. Well, yeah, beyond yeah, me. Where you coming from with so. that? All right, so that was a lot to cover in this week's edition of Smart Guys. Uh, no pay per views coming up this week. For the first time in a while, so we're going to just have a regular episode next week where we'll talk about Raw, SmackDown, and Impact. Overall, what do you think, John, of the product? Uh, WWE's childish nonsense. <laughs> TNA's uh, retarded, um, confusing nonsense. <laughs> I don't know. I still think if I had to choose between the two, I would still pick WWE right now. I am still interested in what's going on with the Nexus stuff. My one complaint is all the freaking stipulations that they've had for matches in the past. I can't really say what, like, I like this one better. They're, they both suck. So yeah, like, right <laughs> now, it's just really, I don't know what, I think they're tri both trying to get their game plan ready for next year. Being that TNA just had their big pay-per-view. And WWE, about this time of year is when they start to gear up for WrestleMania and figure out what they want to do at WrestleMania. I this think is really the, that's this what's is happening. All, yeah, this is typically the slow time for WWE, yeah. traditionally. Right. Uh, once you get to like the rumble in the in that time of year, it, it picks up. Right. Uh, what they're trying. So to this do. is like this, they're going to take a couple out. months to try to figure out what they want to do and once they hit the rumble. And I think that's what they're why they're shuffling the cards. TNA, like TNA again, they're overdoing it. Like are these guys, swerve, right? Are these guys, who's going to swerve? That's like that's almost like this. this what they're selling to you uh, as a fan reason to watch is there's going to be gonna go, who's going to join which group? Right. Is it going to be is someone? Is EV two going to have a traitor? Mm -hmm. Is Fortune going to have a traitor? And Fortune ends up it does have someone who they kick out of Fortune. You know what's going on? And, yeah. Whereas it should be like I, I want to watch this because there's good stuff on it. But the one and thing I do want to say. I also I just want to say uh, you know they're assholes for what the, how they handled the the Ken Anderson thing. That was like, he shouldn't have gotten a concussion in the right, first place. Right. The reason that should have happened. And then to make a show that's basically like a PSA about concussions is like just. Uh, it's, it's not pretty classy. Either. And the other thing I don't understand is, now this was supposed to be their whole reboot, and now the Immortal is the name of the group that's in charge. Mm -hmm. There was not one mention of Immortal on the show this week, and Hulk Hogan wasn't on the show. And he's, he's supposed on, to be the head guy, and he's not on the show. So. He's having like, physical issues, so he's not... 
he's not gonna be on much. I, I can understand, but then if they if they knew that, they shouldn't have had him be such a big part of this whole takeover well, thing. Mm-hmm. They should have had Bischoff and then right. say, oh, Hogan's not part of it because he's hurt or whatever. So yeah. that's my 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 complaint for the week. But anyway, all right, that's it for Smart Guys. We'll be back next week, and we'll see you then.